welcome back to my channel. Apologies for the absence of affinity related videos lately, been a little busy with other projects. One of which was finishing up the update on my affinity photo mastery course, which is now available. And I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Creating colouring pages from existing photos and images is a much called for process by online publishers. It saves a ton of money buying them if you're not an artist yourself. And now with the advent of AI and the likes of Midjourney, Leonardo AI, Dali and others, you can use the same process to create your own sketches from the illustrations that can be produced by AI. I uploaded a video on this process using Affinity Photo version 1 a couple of years ago. I think it's probably my most popular video, but the process I use no longer works successfully using version 2. And I always promised I'd update it and now finally I have. Thank you for your patience if you're one of those who's been waiting. Many will probably have found their own way around this, but if not, here is my version and hopefully it will be helpful. Now, if you've not been here before, my name's Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables and I create videos reviewing various products and the affinity suite within the online publishing industry for low and medium content digital products for the likes of Amazon KDP and other digital platforms. If that kind of thing interests you, then please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos like this. And if this video has been of help to you, then please click the like button and maybe even the buy me a coffee link below. All is greatly appreciated. It all helps to support and helps me grow this channel. The basic process of this is to collate all your images that you wish to convert. And I suggest putting them in a separate folder, clean them up, remove any bits you don't want in the final image. An example of this would be the likes of these Japanese characters in the corner and the backgrounds if you don't want them. And I'll use the inpainting and the erase tools for that. Then we create a macro with the processes for converting one file. We'll save it to the macro library and then run the macro on all the other files. And you'll then have the macro for future use as well. And in the future, you can then use that same macro in conjunction with a second macro that we will create within a batch job. And this will mean you don't have to even open the files if you don't want to, only to clean them initially. OK, let's get started. I have here some 10 or 11 images of various types, public domain images, some PNGs, a vector image, an AI generated image and a photo. And we're going to use the macro process on all of them to change them from their existing format into sketch like images that can be used for coloring books of pages. So they'll go from this to this. And if I just do one live now and I'll click on my macro and you'll see how quickly that does it. And further in, I've got um, a couple of different type illustrations and we'll just click on those. And you can see how fast it does it. And like that. And you'll be able to see the different types of job that it does depending on the image that you start with. So it'll give you a better idea of the kind of images to look for before you even start. Now I have other videos showing people how to use the likes of the inpainting tool and the erase brush tool. I will just quickly go over this one with the inpainting tool, which is down here on the left hand side and select the inpainting brush tool up the size of the brush. And for those of you who follow my videos, you'll know I'm always saying the shortcut for that is the left and right square bracket keys. So if we just brush over that section, you'll see it will take out the characters. And for the background, I would use the erase brush tool, which is this one up here. And we'll use the background erase one again up the size of the brush. And just brush over the background. Now it's not going to do a perfect job on this because this is a very patchy background, but you can go over it several times selecting the different colors 
and you can then go around and tidy up and I won't waste your time doing that now because I have already done it on another image but that's the basic principle of taking a background out. I have been through all the images I have open here and tidied them up, taken out the bits I don't want so they are clean as to how I want them. So the first thing you'll need to do is to make sure you have your macro tab open and to do that you'll come up to window and make sure that macro is ticked and it's also worth making sure library is ticked as well because you'll need that in a minute when you finish your macro so that you can save it. So click on the record button to start recording your macro and the first thing we will do is to make sure the background is selected and duplicate it. Control J duplicates that. The next step is to invert the image, which is Control I. Then we're going to add a blend mode. So we'll come up here to the drop down arrow and choose Color Dodge. And at this point, you should have a more or less white screen. Next, we need to apply a Gaussian blur filter. So you'll select live filters here, select Gaussian blur at the top and the radius as you pull it across will dictate more or less how you want it in terms of the tone of the lines and that's about right for that image but we've still got some color so now we need to take that out so now we will make sure the background is selected so now we will go to adjustments and choose HSL and take the saturation all the way down to zero and now you have a black and white sketch. Now if your lines are not as well defined as this you can now go to levels so again we will choose adjustments come up to levels and you can pull the black level up slightly to deepen the, if I pull it all the way up you'll see what I mean to deepen that outer line. So these are things you can play around with as you record your macro and if you're not happy with it simply go back and start again. But that's about right for that one and there you have a sketch image. So now if I stop recording and you can see up here on the left hand side the steps that we have taken next thing we need to do is save this macro. Uh, you should have the library section in there and on the macros section you come up here to where you've got this one that says add to library. Little plus sign above a graph. Click on that. Give your sketch, sorry, your, your macro a name. Okay. And click OK. And you'll now see your new macro added to the bottom of the general macro list. Now if you've never done a macro before that will be the only one listed there. I've got several as you can see so it's come out down the bottom here. Now if I run through the other images and I click on that macro you can see that it will convert each of those images to a black and white sketch without me having to do anything else to those images other than what I've already done when I first set them up. Okay, now that's done it manually, gone through each of those images and created the black and white sketches for them. When you save these images, the best thing to do is to merge the layers. You cannot do that with a macro because the macro doesn't know which layers to select because they could vary. So the one thing you do need to do is go through and select all the layers and merge them. Now you can set a macro to do it, but you need to select the layers manually first. So you need to manually select the layers as I have done here, hold down shift and select each one and then come up here to layer and choose merge selected and that will 
merge them down to one layer. And you can record a macro to do that once you've selected the layers. You can't include it in the original macro because it won't know which layers it won't know which layers to select. I've already got a macro created for merge layers. So for the next part, when we do the batch jobs, that's the other macro I will be using.